Um, here, you know what we should start off with? Doyle time. It's Doyle time. So, look, John Doyle uploaded something. The liter Did he go? Like, imagine he's just so angry that that Trump got booted off of a uh, off of Twitter. Did, wait, he lost his account. He still doesn't have his account. His hair has given up. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the male, the uh, that that early male pattern baldness already kicking in. Heck off, Kami. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heck Off, Kami. The long-awaited, much-anticipated anti-pornography dissertation will be coming out next week. Finally. This has all been one big metaphor for the importance of delaying gratification. Those with high IQs, of course, understand. So the plan for this week is to have two videos covering broadly what's going on right now in our country in terms of censorship and leftist hypocrisy, which are going to be today and Thursday, respectively. And then also this Thursday for my- Wait, are you guys ready for leftist hypocrisy? Like, what's been going on with- Have you guys noticed how, how hypocrisy all the leftists are recently? My gosh. Arizona people, on the 21st, I'm going to be speaking at the University of Arizona at 6 p.m., giving a very- Should we go? Wait, should we go? Porn is bad? That's very true. It's very true. It's bad. It rots your brain. Dude, why does he use this picture? Why does he unironically use this picture? Wait, I thought that was a joke. He actually uses this? Dude, this picture is creepy as hell up close. Wait, do I still have that? I'm not sure if I have it on me. It, like, I can just instantly pull it up, but it is, it is very weird. You can count every single one of his baby hairs on his neck in that, in that picture. I don't very like high it. high IQ speech. I'll put a link with more information. So when you sign up on the website, like, yeah, you know, you get a bunch of stop you talking, go join our gilded server. There will be a link in the description or on the website for members. Very excited about that as well. So those wait, are the updates. What? you can now go join our gilded server. Who the fuck? What? What is this like League of Villains picture? Wait, what? What is this? Do you see this? These are just like a bunch of his peoples. But in the meantime, we're probably going to be putting a lot more content on the website, uh, some live streams and miscellaneous videos, etc. And that's important because we never know if YouTube is going to decide that I'm not allowed to talk to you guys anymore. So when you sign up on the website, like, yeah, you know, you get a bunch of cool stuff, you get benefits, whatever. But really, the most important thing is that it ensures that we'll never lose contact with each other because that would be a bummer, right? And on that note, as you may have heard, our Discord server got nuked for literally no reason. But thankfully, we've Oof. got something else set up now. Wait a second. Discord. Discord got nuked for literally no reason? Was that the same Discord server that um that Red Eagle Politics was in? Because if it was, listen, I'm going to tell you that's not for no reason, okay? When we were in that, they were like role-playing killing Jews in that, in that Discord server. Like, oh my gosh. I never made it into a video or anything. I probably should have uh, before, uh, before it got nuked. But uh, no, that thing definitely deserved to... Uh, Get out of here. Oh, hey, Twitter. Hey, let's see what's on. What's going on with us. Ooh, no. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. Wait, where's what's up with this gilded server? Ah, oh, no. On the website for members. Very excited about that as well. So. Oh, it's just for members. Cringe. Okay. Those whatever. are the updates. Now we can get into the utter state of our country which we're less excited about, but such is life. So I want to start off by outlining how we got to this place. I put a video out two Thursdays ago in which I said basically that while we might understand why people decided to occupy the Capitol, it was ultimately stupid and it's going to come back to bite us. And then the next day, our president was effectively blacklisted from the internet because that event allowed them to occupy a in which they could potentially argue that his rhetoric alone is inciting violence. And so what happened? People got angry. They wanted to make a statement. And when all is said and done, as we predicted, we're going to get our teeth kicked down our throats because to reiterate the point from that video, conservatives don't have enough power in society to get away with something like that. We all know that the left burned down DC the day that Trump was inaugurated. What? We all know about what they did this summer. We know. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, chill. Conservatives don't have enough power in society. What does this mean? I'm just, I'm just so shocked. I'm so uh, conservatives run like most uh, most state legislatures. Conservatives had full control of the uh, full control of the government for I think of most of twenty uh, for, for for most of the twenty twenties. My bad, most of the twenties, right? Like like the twenty tens. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's still true. That's incredible to me how this guy thinks that conservatives are just completely on the backslide and liberals run the country. This is just not true. Le people still think that the word liberal is a dirty word. Are you sure? Are you okay, buddy? I don't know, dude. Burn down DC. Oh yeah, we all remember how uh, how like a a Antifa, Hillary Clinton supporters completely destroyed all of DC. DC was just like, it looked like what Nagasaki looked like after they dropped the bombs. It was just completely gone. I, I, for, I remember that when they had to completely rebuild um, uh, <laughs> DC. You guys remember that? Straight white men have a rough in the DC, sh uh, in the US shark. That's true. 
I, I keep forgetting that our most oppressed minority class in this country is the straight white male. About when the Kavanaugh protesters occupied. No, we only have DC two. <laughs> yeah, DC two, right down, right down the road from old DC. You can it, right now. It's just like um, you you can take a a guided tour through old DC where you can uh, you can still faintly see some uh, some like a uh, spray painted cinder blocks with the uh, and and uh, the anarchy logo very neatly stenciled onto it. Capital, but it doesn't even matter because they have the power. They control the narratives and <laughs> New York City for. <laughs> honestly, I think it's um, I, I we're on New York City four, but honestly, I think we're on like Minneapolis seven at this point. Honestly, they can act with eternal impunity, and we're going to talk exclusively about leftist hypocrisy in the video that comes out Thursday, but. The reason that I bring this up now is to illustrate what happens when you aren't disciplined. As a movement, as a person, it doesn't even matter. You have to have discipline. I understand the anger. I understand the examples that have been set by the left, but we can't be the ones to act on impulse like that. Look at where it got us. We made our little statement. We didn't actually accomplish anything, but we got some funny pictures. And now everyone is getting arrested by the Fed. Made our little statement? Little statement as in trying to... My bad. Actively breaking into the Capitol building, searching for politicians to hang. That's, that's your little statement? This be, be, all because they didn't love Trump enough. They didn't uh, bow at the altar of Trump. They didn't take a big enough gulp from the cum, from the Trump cum chalice. Okay. Our president has been kicked off the internet. Conservative censorship is getting cranked up well on its way to 11. And for what? For nothing. We didn't we didn't show him who's boss. No, we got placed on the no fly list. You think they didn't want Ooh. you to do that? Of course they wanted you to do that. And you took the bait. You gave them the excuse they needed to convince the masses that Trump and his supporters are threats to the existence of the country. And now we're in basically the worst position that we've ever been in, which is okay. It was inevitable. But the lesson going forward is that you have to be disciplined. You have to be thinking long term. You can't expect a reversal of 80 years of trends leading to the collapse of this country within one administration. This is something that we'll be pushing back against for the rest of our lives. And you have to be comfortable in the knowledge that you will probably not live to see the results of your effort, but that your grandchildren, or maybe even your children, if you're lucky, that they will is good enough for you. That. <laughs> Uh, I just think, they, I mean, for one, yes, they are a threat to democracy. They're a threat to the country. Honestly, they're a threat to the planet. When Donald Trump, try, when Donald Trump tried to moonwalk his way into World War Three after, uh, uh, after like a bombing Iran, I think, tw uh, 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 bombing Iran and like Syria. I mean, I think, I think, yeah, we can, we can say that these people are threats to democracy. Also, the entire planet when it comes to global warming and another world war. Yes, these people are threats to basically everything. They completely reject the Enlightenment. They completely reject, like, a provable reality. When, I, when Bones was in here and we were talking about how I was memeing, I was like, anything that I disagree with is, like, trench coat globalist um, lies uh, from the tablecloth. I was like, and then... That's actually stuff that they believe. If they just don't just don't disagree, if they don't agree with it, it's just like liberal propaganda from from uh, intelligentsia or something. It's it's super weird. Against for the rest of our lives, and you have to be comfortable in the knowledge that you will probably not live to see the results of your effort, but that your grandchildren, or maybe even your children, if you're lucky, that they will is good enough for you. That in itself justifies your efforts. And the Trump presidency was a huge step forward in the right direction. In fact, the election of Donald Trump is a much larger step forward for the country than Joe Biden will be a step backwards for the country. And what's particularly good is that it's forcing us to realize how dire our situation actually is. It's forcing and necessitating a political and psychological evolution that has never been seen before in this country, let alone amongst conservatives. And right now we're in the very early stages of that because a lot of us really don't know what to do right now. We're not quite sure what to think because we've basically been conditioned to believe that the only evil is government if we could only have small government then okay listen 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 this is big stupid trump i don't know what you mean by like a step forward trump helped radicalize many people in a very bad way hey what's good hey what's going on how you doing uh trump ha helped radicalize a lot of people in a very bad way um he he added to he he added to like false flag narratives. He, we'll, we'll talk about that later in the stream. He added to uh, he, he added to like things like birtherism, just the, the general rampant racism. He he was everything America was trying to hide and pretend it wasn't for a long for a long, long period of time. Um, and he helped show us that uh, that those things like things like out, out and out racism. These things just don't ex uh, these things still exist. Trump. But the thing is, what? Trump didn't do like that much. Like when you think about it, when it comes to how effective presidents are, what the hell is that? When it comes to how effective presidents are, he really wasn't, he did. He really didn't do that much. He didn't get too much done. And most of the things that he was able to do, we can easily undo, especially since now the Democrats have a, a very slim, but a majority in the house and the Senate. Uh, lots of things that Trump did, you can very easily undo. Trump didn't, 
push through much policy that is really really has that much sticking power besides getting the Supreme Court to be six to three. Besides that, not much he did is super reversible and uh, uh, super unreversible. Uh, the only lasting damage that he did is to the public discourse and to radicalizing people towards literal fascism. I mean, the people who th just actually think that uh, that they that um, tomorrow at noon, Donald Trump is still going to be president, who have radicalized people to the point where they're watching things like right side media that had Nick Fuentes on as a contributor. My bad. Nick Fuentes on as actually being a show host. And uh, in like Newsmax and OAN to these people, these people in these places that have even less journalistic standards than Fox News, which is already banned in many developed nations for not holding up to their journalistic standards. Sean Hannity, who will unironically come out and being like, I don't vet anything that I show you on the show and hold that up as a point of pride because being anti-intellectual and being not smart is uh, like a badge of honor between these sorts of people. You didn't think fascists can be impeached and censored? Can't really be fat. Okay. Oh, I see. You're one of those, someone who's fascist in a, uh, in a liberal democracy, that's not actual fascism. To be an actual fascist, you actually have to be, be actively the head of a fascist state or something. Something stupid like that. I see. Ah, oh, you're one of the, you're one of the dumb ones. I see. Weird fact about uh, DC, Green Arrow is a sock dem and Hal Jordan is a libertarian. It was actually a crossover series that they discussed political issues, both uh, cited while fighting crime together. Every bit, every bit as terrible as it sounds. It's basically straw man, both sock dams and libertarians. Yeah, that sounds horribly. <laughs> that sounds like it's horribly written. I'm not going to lie. We'd all be much better off. Big government sucks, all that rhetoric. And there's truth to that. But what even is government? Government is just power. Government means that if you don't listen to them, eventually someone will show up to your house with a gun. That's power. And the state has a monopoly on that type of coercion. But here's basically where this comes into conflict with conservatism, because as conservatives, we acknowledge human nature and we recognize that everyone is different. We all have different skills and levels of intelligence. We all have different interests, aptitude, whatever metric you. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. We all have different levels of intelligence. Who <laughs> I could see. Like we're all completely different. And because of that, you will inexorably have a hierarchy in society. Invariably, it's, it's unavoidable. You're always going to have power in society. And so the problem that we have as conservatives is that we've tried to minimize that power. We've tried to avoid that power and the consequences. Wait, what? Conservatives tried to minimize the power of hierarchy? Wait, what? Wait, am I hearing him wrong? Of it by pledging allegiance to these abstract ideas of private companies, make your own internet service provider, etc. But really what that comes down to is just pretending that the power doesn't exist and just hoping that it kind of goes away while feeling as though we're taking a victory because we've remained strong in our principles that require us. Oh my gosh, he actually thinks that conservatives these days have been trying to undo power hierarchies. <laughs> Imagine them challenging power structures. Wow, that's incredible. I guess we'll get back to that. Anyways, I don't know, it's really wild to me how, um, like, He's, they're going to say that. Oh, yeah. Also, I got this. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to get attacked. Oh, <laughs> air strong. Air very strong. Sorry. Uh, I, I got off track. The ADHD was kicking in. Um. Yeah, rolling back protections from minorities. Like, there's, there's, there's so many things, so many things to tackle. Muslim ban. Yeah, the, the whole like immigrant fear mong. Oh, soup poop. Thank you so much for the ten dollar donation. Just came here to give you some support. Uh, keep being, keep being a king. You too. Keep being so wonderful. Oh my gosh. Um. Okay. So, con like, just conservative ideals as they, as they are means upholding and even strengthening power structures you ever wonder why the most conservative places on uh, on this earth have massive power structures like women being under men gay uh like a gen like gender non-conforming uh non a uh, not cis has uh, not cis het people poor people being at the very uh shark threatening me with a gun in, in the thumbnail it's not a gun it's, it's not a firearm it's fake um, uh, poor people and, um, uh, and like the, um, and the like illiterate, the, uh, the, the, the disabled, all of these people being at the very low end of society 
um, like cast, knowing your place, staying, uh, staying lockstep in line with the narrative. Lots of these things are massive conservative ideals. Knowing your place and staying in there and acquiescing, bending the knee and genuflecting at the altar of hierarchy is something fundamentally built into the core of conservative ideals. To say that th that normal, that like your average uh, normie conservative now um, has been trying to uh, pull down power structures is just laughable while they still... Uh, while they still push for like women, uh, women to be like subject to their, to their husbands and stuff. I mean, I don't know. It's just really interesting how he can say that, but I guess he's going, he's going to go the opposite direction. He's like, we need to be reinforcing social hierarchies to do nothing except wait to lose. So the point is that power is inevitable. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's only bad when bad people have that power which is where we are right now. The same way that censorship isn't always bad. It's only bad when bad people do it. And the reflexive conservative response to this is, well, now who gets to decide who the good and bad guys are? You do. We do. Do you not know right from wrong? Do you not know what good and bad are? Because if, if that's the case, go do your homework. Take a break from this. Go figure that out. And we have to be very clear here. We're not talking about the thought police. We're not talking about arresting people for having the wrong opinions. You know, like they're going to do to us because they actually play for keeps. No, we are simply <gasps> acknowledging. Wait, he, man, he's just like Nick Fuentes. He's like... <laughs> The thing is, he is actually just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Nick Fuentes. It's really interesting because Fuentes was on Twitter like, if Joe Biden, my bad, it wasn't on Twitter. It was, um, where was it? Uh, it was, uh, uh, I think it was on his Twitter. No, no, my bad. It was on his, um, his show. What's it called? America something. Um, on his show, he was like, oh yeah, if Joe Biden wins, black people are just going to come to my house and kill me. And they're going to be okay with it. Black people will come to my house with a Minecraft pickaxe and start mining my scalp for uh, for diamonds. And uh, a cop is going to be there, and the cop is going to be Hispanic, um, but more Hispanic than me because I'm the good Hispanic and they're the bad Hispanic. And they're going to kill me. I'm going to die a brutal death uh, by uh, uh, by the hands of people with way too much melanin, and they're going to be okay with it. And this is going to be Joe Biden's world. The white man will fall. And um, this guy's like, oh, yeah. He's ba he's basically on board with all of that. He's like, oh yeah, they're gonna throw us in jail for thinking too for for thinking too much. My gosh, he's gonna this John Doyle has already in his Google Docs. He has he has his version of like a letter uh, a letter from like a Birmingham prison or something. He's he's gonna he thinks he's like Martin Luther King. He's he's writing his letter about how he needs to we need to wake up the masses. It, it's just really interesting. It's really funny. Wait, so what is this? Ah, you're one of those guys that buys into the idea that he incited an insurrection. I didn't even talk about it. I'll believe it when I hear some quotes until then. It's all about, it's about as true as the tooth fairy. I mean, okay. Doyle's uh, little intro is a slice of, uh, of Americans. Like, yeah, I mean, Doyle doesn't even agree with his own intro anymore because he hates white women. So, you know, it, it just <laughs> plays 1984. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not. It's just like me being banned from Twitter is literal 1984. It's not even metaphorical. It's actual 1984 when I get banned from Twitter. I thought you guys knew this. Acknowledging that power is bad when it is used to do bad things, and censorship is bad when it is used to censor good things, and more specifically things that seek to push back against those bad things. The example would basically be this. What the hell am I listening to? Good things are good when good people do good things, and bad things are bad when bad people do bad things, and good people do bad things, and bad people will never do good things because they're genetically incapable of doing so. Right now, you have every media apparatus in the country pressuring the society to ostracize and punish people who support Donald Trump. Are we supposed to pretend that's actually free speech? And if we punish them for their role in promoting... Yes. Yes. I don't know. So these... The party of taking, um, actually having accountability, once they face consequences for their actions, now they're like, oh no, do you think nobody should ever face any social repercussions at any point in time for whatever reason, no matter what the belief is? What? Is this your actual belief? Because I don't believe, I don't think it is. I think you're just lying. I'm pretty sure most people are going to be like, oh yeah, there's somebody who probably shouldn't, who probably shouldn't be like held up and just been like, oh yeah, this idea is okay. And I don't think supporting Trump is just okay. That's just not okay. I'm sorry. If you just hate it, maybe you should leave. All right. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and turn those bootstraps into freaking propellers and fly your way on out of my country, idiot. 
the riots, the lies that incited the riots that did billions of dollars worth of property damage throughout the summer? Are we going to pretend that's an attack on free speech? The, the truth is, is that the left is... Are we going to pretend that's an oh, sorry. attack I on can't... riots? My the gosh. lies that incited the riots that did billions of dollars He doesn't worth... even care. He doesn't even just throwing this up. George Floyd riots caused uh, record setting two billion in damage. New report says here why the true cost is even higher. OK, but was it was. What does this have to do with anything? Speech. And if we punish them for their role in promoting the riots, the lies that incited the riots, that the lies that incite. Oh, OK. So Trump didn't incite the in, uh, the the riots at the at the Capitol. But Nancy Pelosi, by saying uh, black people get shot by the police. Now, this is the lie that incited. <laughs> this is the lie that incited any riot that ever happened at any point in time with, with, throughout any city in, um, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the United States ever. Did billions of dollars worth of property damage throughout the summer? Are we going to pretend oh. that's an attack on free speech? The Trekkie, thank you so much for the, for the host. I appreciate you. One of my favorite non-binary people, Reno. Thank you. Came in at the best time you love dunking on this motherfucker i think we all hate i think we all hate doyle but um hey listen if you sub if anybody subs here you get our legendary twitch world renowned commie emote everybody loves the commie look at that look at that heck off commie emote my goodness remember when he said the trump hat never comes off oof there she is there she is there you go. Look, look at those commies. Look at those commies. My goodness. There's so much commie going on right now. I can't even believe it. The truth is that the left doesn't actually care about free speech. And obviously we know that. But even now you'll hear some conservatives say, well, the left used to support free speech. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. You gave them a seat at the table. You absolute doorknob. Why did you do that? What does that mean? You give them a seat at the table? They're in five. Yeah, look at that. Commie combo. A co you may even say a commie bow. You can't do heck off commie anymore. No, no, Dan, I'm so sorry. Seat at the table. What's ha what you think that like no liberals were ever going to have any, uh, any political power. You do know before like Reagan and all those clowns, the Democrats had like a 40 year rule over the country. That's incredible. Cavalier. Thank you so much for the Twitch prime subscription. My goodness. You love using the door the doorknob insult. This dude ruined it. How do I, I can't believe you gave you let uh, sixty percent of the country hold any sort of power, you doorknob? <laughs> okay, nerd. Doyle's literally the type of dude to remind the teacher uh, when she forgets to hand out homework. He's literally an. I hate this guy. Nobody liked this kid. There was a time in this country we had a social and a moral fabric, and that fabric was upheld by this little thing called the fucking win. When like a mar when like a marital rape was a uh, was like cool and epic and vogue? is that when we had a moral fabric? When we owned a literal human beings as property, is that when we had a moral? Uh, is that when we had a moral fra fabric? When we started hunting people down in the drug war? When we started like demonizing people for their uh, for their immigration status? Is that is that when we had moral fabric? When? What are you talking about? The mythical America where everything was where everything was based and cool. Like before the nineteen sixties. All through the 1960s, there was like actual segregation. I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe it was moral. It was moral and family fabric for just the white straight cis people, and some of them, not the women. <laughs> but other than that, you were just, you were just vibing. You were just humming. The uh, uh, the country machine was just humming along. All right, perfectly fine. <laughs> Haven't watched the Super Bowl since the Giants were last in it. Yeah. Crash to burn, dude, 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 dude. Cavier? Oh, should I say, I should not say Cavalier. It's Cavier. Yikes. <laughs> he's like seven years old. How does he even know how it used to be? Listen, he's watched a lot of movies on, on like those, you know, those, you know, those uh, TV channels. For like old people, like freaking Hallmark. Yeah, his grandma kept on Hallmark. Then he saw like old westerns and uh in like black and white movies where <laughs> where a dude like jumped through a window. There was like a massive Wilhelm scream, and he went, uh, and the dude went. 
to 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 a gang of thugs, and they did fifty seven backflips and flew through the uh and flew through like the cardboard movie set, and then he like grabbed he grabbed the woman by by the booby, he lifted her up by the booby, like literally engulfed her entire face in a kiss and threw her on the couch and then left, and he's like, Fuck, we need this, don't forget what they took from us, never forget. <laughs> Like never forget what they took from us. And then he look he looks at uh, he he looks at the modern movies and it's like Wonder Woman, and he's like, ah! he just starts screeching. It he just lays down in bed with his iPod Touch and starts crying tears tears all the tears until he until he becomes dehydrated and he has to drink more water and as soon as the water touches his tongue it instantly goes to his tear ducts and it's just more tears. He just cries and cries and cries because he remembers what they Pog. took from him. Pog. Crash to burn. Thank you so much for the follow. For joining the frenzy and being so incredibly Pog. I appreciate you. The family unit and leftist intellectuals, quote unquote, have long understood that if you can successfully dismantle the family unit, then you can dismantle and take over the society because there will be nothing. What the hell is happening? I don't, dude, I don't know, dude. I, I just don't understand. Like, uh, our common, like, no, uh, our common idea of a nuclear family where where a mom and dad has complete or, or two parents have complete uh, control over this uh, uh, over the uh, the meat child, the meat bag that they that they pushed out and now own as actual property. But remember when people what happened to it takes a family to raise uh, it takes a village to raise a kid. Now, it, now it, uh, but people were not made to just be raised by it. I think any parent, I don't know if we have any parents here, but I know for a fact, like 90% of parents, if you ask them, if two people uh, always feels like enough to raise a child, they'll emphatically tell you no. Like astronomically no. A child is not supposed to be raised by just two people, like completely alone in a suburb, in a suburban home, completely disconnected from their environment. That's just not how it's supposed to work. All right. Nobody's trying to destroy your family unit to take over the country. They they just want to introduce more family units because more than one is okay. To ground people, there will be no stability, etc. Karl Marx wrote about this. Herbert Marcuse wrote about this. Uh, the authoritarian personality, which is something that we've talked about before on this channel, that touched on this. And so in order to preserve the social oh and moral God. fabric, which is necessary. Oh, my gosh. He thinks Karl Marx literally wrote. We literally wrote in his book, when we... In the future, uh, us leftist intellectuals must ensure the destruction of the common conservative family. And this will easily lead to the complete disillusion of any country and will completely fall. The trad wives will burn in the deepest depths of Hades and all the strong men will dissolve into a pit of acid. And that acid is named communism. And they will all come out on the other side as... <laughs> as bra girls and e-boys and we will forever live in the communist utopia signed Karl Marx XOXO tour life you know I, I just don't know if he actually thinks that this is real for a free and prosperous society, there were just certain things that you didn't discuss. It was considered unbecoming, rightfully so. And so the left essentially employed the idea of free speech as a political strategy throughout the latter half of the 20th century. Like, hey man, casual sex. Hey man, divorce. Hey man, pornography. Hey man. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this, why does he describe, why does he describe like societal happenings? Like it's a dare presentation, you know? Have you guys ever... You guys, you know, hanging out in high school, you're a kid, maybe you're coming into your own sexuality, you, you're just coming out of the, you know, girls have cootie stages, or the maybe I don't necessarily like boys stage, and some person sl calmly walks up to you and is like, hey man, casual sex, <laughs> and you're like, wow, did that happen to you guys? Hey man. Shark. Pog. Gay people. You know, did that did that happen to you guys? Or, or was that just me? Poppy Poppy Whoppy, thank you so much for the follow for joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pog. Hey man, drugs. Hey man. Conservatism bad. Hey man. <laughs> this isn't <laughs> What's happening? 
they're taught us what drugs uh, that drugs were uh, what drugs were lit and what and uh, which ones weren't. This is actually true. My my like drug officer, the dude was like in his mid fifties or something. And he was like, I remember when I took weed. Baby, I was out of my mind. And I was like, oh, geez. All right, buddy. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining the frenzy. How you doing tonight? The idea of free speech as a political strategy throughout the latter half of the 20th century. Like, hey, man, casual sex. <laughs> I wish this happened. Casual sex. <laughs> is it me or Doyle's been getting more uh, disheveled? Um, he's been pause champ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you guys want this? <laughs> you guys need this? I think he's been he's been on this train for a hot minute. I, this isn't anything new. Yeah, there you go. Quality meme right there. Quality meme. This is this actually isn't new. Um, but it's it, it's equally. Is equally as unhinged. Now he gets to play on. Before, I don't think that he's that he was less unhinged. Uh, wh what I think happened is that before he was like, if something, if this or that happened, which was obviously going to happen, then we'd be in the end of days. And now, since remember, we went over a video where he was like, oh yeah, if Trump loses, um, all of these other states will flip. Conservatives will have no chance of doing anything. Uh, we'll all be wrangled up and put into the uh, in into the femboy ranch where they uh, inject our literal sphincters with estrogen on a daily basis until we have massive milkers and zero PP, and we'll be just be shipped shipped on out uh, to be um, uh, to be like I don't know, Antifa cum dumps. Or something, and we'll love it. It'll be great, but we'll, but we won't. Our previous selves won't love it. Um, something along those lines. He actually thought that that was something that was going to happen. Um, they're not wrong. <laughs> don't feed. The, don't feed them. Stay back. Hey man, divorce. Hey man, pornography. Hey man, <laughs> communism, atheism. Hey man, Satanism. Hey man. <laughs> no, wait. Who does this? Who wait? Who? Satanism, like what? Atheism, wait, what happened? What are you talking about? I don't, dude. There, there have been, there have been like pagan, there have been like pagan religions and and uh, uh, I was gonna say anti-Semitism. That's been around for a while. Like pagan religions and um, atheism and like uh, the, the, these things have been around for a while. This isn't new, okay? Man, just live and let live. Free speech, man. Freedom of religion? No, not that. No. Free freedom only works when you're letting him do things. You being able to do things is not freedom. That's infringement on his rights. Man, it doesn't bother you? And the poor American man thought to himself, wow, now I suppose it is a part of freedom. It doesn't affect me. Now fast forward a couple decades. All those things just got just mortared into society. And then society. What the fuck was that? Mo what was that motion? Did you guys see that? Society's like. Boom. Mommy, mommy, help. Give me your pee pee. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Dude, this is unhinged. I've I've actually, I don't think I've actually seen him more unhinged. Mommy, help. Give me your pee pee. <laughs> Boom. Uh, oh my gosh. Just, just gripping the poor child by the foreskin. Is, is that, is, is that how, <laughs> give me your pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> give me it come here what did i join i'm so listen we're watching doyle okay you can you can take a look for yourself you can take a look for yourself mm. mommy mommy help give me your pee pee mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's he has a ptsd after that is this what happened to him my gosh doyle it's a it, you have enough i know for a fact you have enough members to a uh, to afford therapy all right i know it's okay to cry we all have trauma we all have a little bit of trauma, okay? We can all work through this. Look at that thousand-yard stare he had after. This is something he actually thinks that thinks that's happening. Mommy, mommy, help! Give me your PP. Boom! Just detonating foreskin. <laughs> Honestly, that would be a great don't know or sub sound. No, we can't do this. Mommy, mommy, help! Give me your PP. Boom! <laughs> No, we we cannot have. <laughs> that 
that can no in no way, shape, or form can this be a can this be a dodo sound? No way. Maybe I'll think about it. Okay, if if someone donates and sometime this week and you hear that, don't don't be surprised. <laughs> Give me reparations. You're not even black. You're Samoan. <laughs> Now look where we are. That same man, that same old stock American man, the poor naive bastard, he's probably now on his deathbed saying goodbye to his transgender grandchildren before his family. Oh no. What's wrong with having transgender grandchildren? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Who is this man? This is John Doyle. Family has him euthanized, and he has learned that it actually family has him euthanized. What, were you never pulling? Did they never pull the plug on on people like ever? It, where do you think the term "pull the plug" came from? You think that you think that happens now? Like a nurse comes over and and just what? D d <clears throat> they just open the window on the third floor of the hospital. You just get kicked out, and they just have a grave open right there. Grandpa just falls in, and someone's already shoveling dirt over it. What are you talking about? What do you think? Do <clears throat> you think that the 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 um the gender nonconform their gender nonconforming uh, uh grandchild comes into their room and is like, oh, grandpa's still here, Ugh, and then just unplugs their respirator to plug in their, I, I don't know, like omnidirectional dildo or something. What what's what are you talking about? This guy is not okay. Unhinged. This guy is definitely something special. Unhinge. You're a, grand, you're a transgender grandchild. I mean, that just happens. It just be that way sometimes. The, uh, you can see the brain worms dripping out of his ears. The brain worms have completely run out of uh, food to eat. His gray matter is no more. It's just worm poop and brain worms, and they have to find a new host. It actually does affect him because these people never cared about free speech. They cared about winning. Yeah, they cared about total domination of the United States of America and everything for which it stands. And how do you achieve that? You break through the barrier. You appeal to the idea of God-given rights by Trojan horsing your agenda under the guise of free speech. And then once you build up some power in society, you purge the opposition. And they're left scratching their heads. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Does he think that the left never had any power in this country? There have been like two, two parties in this entire country forever. Uh, unless he thinks that they've been, yeah, appeal to absurdity. <laughs> I think this is, he's gone past fallaciousness. It, he, he's gone past. He is. It, he has transcended irony. He has transcended parody. He has transcended um, logical fallacies. He is on a new plane. This generation, if it does one thing, it will find a new. What is going to have to come up with a new word for what they're doing? Because they can't even make fun of this. It's like, but, but, but I thought you cared about free speech. They don't. They never did. They never will. So here's a thought experiment. If our God-given rights are protected by the Constitution, and if they will be infringed upon by the undermining of that Constitution, then is it not paradoxical to enable indoctrination masquerading as free speech that will result in that? What the fuck? Wait, I'm sorry. Wait, I actually have to slow this down. He's doing the thing again where he just starts to, he just start, he just started tossing together a word salad. I, and I need to slow it down and actually catch. He just started throwing ingredients in the bowl and he just started tossing like it's uh, like quick serve delicious. I actually need some time to, to take this one in. And if they will be infringed upon by the undermining Free speech they don't they never did they never will so here's a thought experiment if our god-given rights are protected by the constitution and if they will be infringed upon by the undermining of that constitution then is it not paradoxical to enable indoctrination masquerading as free speech that will result in that constitution being thrown out within a few generations and again i'm not Twitch, opinion. Twitch, my opinions do not reflect those. <laughs> Shark my opinions don't uh, reflect the views of Shark 300 either, okay? Leave me alone. Um, my gosh. My goodness. This is this is the real indoctrination, okay? This is what the real indoctrination is um, by conservatives, making people believe that the, uh, that the Constitution is some sort of like, um, like it's the Ten Commandments, honestly. Like it's it, endowed by God. Um, George Washington crawled to the to to, to, to like uh, 
the Rocky, the top of the peak of the Rocky Mountains, okay? And he took this, he took a, a piece of paper to the sky and a lightning bolt came down and, and etched uh, from, from, from the Lord himself and etched the entire constitution. And, and that's it. And then he came down. He's like, look, guys, what I found. And then that's it. And that's where the Constitution was made. And it cannot be changed. It cannot be altered. It's like it's like Newton's laws of physics. OK, uh, like <laughs> a commie in motion will stay in motion until a fascist is there to stop it. Um, I, I don't I don't understand how these people like, you know, we, we know we have a, a ratif um like a ratification system. There are like amendments that have been put through. The Constitution has been altered several times throughout our history un until recently where conservatives finally won, where they make people believe that all the horribleness that's still packed into the Constitution should just stay there because the Constitution is something that can that could never be changed. It's like etched in stone and we can never, never, ever change it. It is just incredible to me how these people think that, th that it can still happen. Even like the founders, they're going against the founders. What was it? Was it Franklin who said, like, trying to make the the, the reason why they wanted the country, uh, the uh, the Constitution to be changed consistently and laws to be able to be amended um, uh, quickly, relatively quickly and reasonably is because he said <clears throat> in his own words, like making a country abide by the same laws that we did today when we had like freaking horse drawn carriages and we thought slavery was epic um, is like making a making a man wear the shirt that he had to wear that, that fit him as a boy because it just doesn't make any sense. We've evolved. We've changed. This isn't what we are anymore. We're something new. We're a different country. And we shouldn't have to abide by the same laws. We should be able to make our own country. That's what the Constitution is there for. It's not as some like thing that cannot be altered or changed ever as a ratification process. We can make amendments, change amendments. It can be changed at any point in time. We just have to have the political willpower to do it. That's it. There's no reason why it should be the way it is just forever. It shouldn't be. They didn't make it that. This is a lie that's been peddled to you. Um, to make to make you believe that we have to work within the bounds of the Constitution and not think further. We I mean, we herald our founding fathers as some sort of like brilliant revolutionaries to think outside of the box. Why do we have to think inside of their box? They lived in the 1700s. Don't you think that we should think outside of that box? You don't think the box has expanded outside of that? It has. And we need we need to move on. The cult of the founding fathers, obviously, they'd be like. They they'd like I mean they they'd go all all like freaking Jesus mode. They like chase somebody chase one of these guys around with a whip to think um uh, to make them believe uh if if they found out that they actually believe that these people are some sort of um uh, high high lords of the nine realms and uh, their word is stone. I'm not advocating for censorship of people who criticize America. I'm not saying that kids should be taught to pledge allegiance to the state. I'm simply saying there's a difference between pledging allegiance to the state and pledging allegiance to the flag. I will never pledge allegiance to the state because they're gay and they make me pay them. <laughs> Come on. I can't do I, I can't make this up. Please let a prompt with my political affiliations. Yeah, I should probably do that. The question is asked so much. Left or right? It left. Okay. I can't, I can't, I can't make this up. The last guy, he was like, it was a gay op when, uh, when Antifa was there trying to make us look bad. This guy, the state is just homosexual. Them to make my life more difficult, but I'll pledge allegiance to the flag because by pledging allegiance to the flag, you are symbolically pledging allegiance to what that flag used to stand for and showing respect for the men who died for this country back when, frankly, there was a more explicitly obvious reason to do so. And so the point is that criticizing the government, yeah, go crazy, yes. But that's not what's going on right now. Oh, criticize the government. Good. Criticize the mythology of America. Bad. Oh, so you can't criticize the flag. Oh, okay. That's where this is where this is what he's trying to do. This is where he's trying to find his little in. So he can still believe the same things while trying to differentiate differentiate himself. Doyle is let, let me just tell you Doyle, for conservatives. Doyle is the conservative version of of the bitch who's like, I'm not like other girls, okay? I, I listen to Billie Eilish and I wear I wear long shirts under my T-shirts, okay? And I play Animal Crossing. I'm not like other girls, all right? Let me into the boys. I'm like one of the boys, okay? I wear Thrasher. I'm like I'm not like other girls. Doyle is, I'm not like other girls, ing. Other conservatives right now. He's doing it. Blatant sexism from Shark. Wrong. Doyle's also a bitch. Look at him. He looks like he's a twink, okay? I could break this kid in half. <laughs> he he's also a bitch. It doesn't don't worry about it. Also, what were those the the like the like chimpanzee twins? 
Shit talking twinks now? Indeed. I'm not like other girls ing. He's it. He is. All right. He's doing it. He's like, he's, I'm not like other girls ing conservatives by trying to pretend like he's different when they're like pledge allegiance to the flag. He's like, well, actually don't pledge allegiance to like that because that's homosexual and bad, but pledge allegiance to the, to the mythology, the lore of America of being the greatest world. And when you pledge allegiance to the flag, you're not pledging allegiance to the, uh, to the total, uh, to the total uh, cringe cucked and a uh, blue pilled state that we live in right now. But the old mythology, the old world, the, what we used to be. Okay. That's what you're pledging allegiance to. Just, just, just watch a couple of Hallmark movies with me. Okay. Look how rugged and strong and thick those boys are. And look how, and look how subservient and beautiful those women were. That's what we can have. Never forget what they took from you. He's actually doing it. What's going on is a mass marketed propaganda and indoctrination campaign that seeks to undermine everything that that flag used to stand for and that this country used to stand for. And so the question is basically, how long are we going to allow for that indoctrination to occur? For how much longer are we going to shill for the supposed free speech? Of just so you know, when he uses the word indoctrination, he just means societal change. Um, he just, people have changed. They think gay people are okay. People have changed. They don't think like segregation is cool. People have changed. They have less conservative values as they did before. People have just changed. The country has changed. The people have changed. Um, what used to be like the old myth of uh, the, the conservative dream has changed. Okay. People just don't believe that stuff anymore. It's just changed. Okay. This is not indoctrination. It's just society changing. Society changing. And it's okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, societies, cultures will never stay the same ever. There's not a culture in this world that has stayed the same throughout like a thousand years or even a couple hundred years uh, because America is a relatively new country. <clears throat> this is just not something that's true, but okay. Whose ultimate goal is to take all of our rights away entirely because we'll never take back oh the media. Gosh. We'll never. I just. I just all your rights away entirely all your man don't you think it's incredible how cons i'll still say this it, because ben shapiro made the same meme don't you think it's really funny when <clears throat> media these big media apparatuses all right that are that are controlled by stock uh, uh, st uh shareholders that have uh, com uh, are completely bought by business they co they run on complete business okay ideology is right under making money that's what they are when you have corporations making money for your shareholders is number one number one all right when 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 we when when this is the thing that's happening don't you think it's interesting in a, in a capitalist society, these people love themselves some capitalism. Okay. I love super capitalism, but these guys love cringy ass, normal capitalism in this society where money is goes before anything else. Don't you think it's interesting how conservatives have completely failed on this front? They failed. They've completely failed. This is the opposite and they want and he just wants to uh, undo this whole whole hegemony because he just because they failed. Oh, once capitalism starts failing for him, that's when it becomes a problem. When capitalism fails for people who have been redlined. Oh, the who care? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. When capitalism fails for people who can't afford health care, who cares? When capitalism fails for the people who grow up in low income housing or people who grow up in uh, in schools that can barely that can barely um uh, pay pay for the kids who can't afford um uh, free lunches. Uh, who who can bear, who have to get free lunches because they can't afford lunch? Who cares? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That sounds like a personal problem for all those sorts of people. All their problem. But once, but once, uh, uh the, the dude on CNN doesn't say gay people bad enough times, uh in a month for him. Now capitalism has failed. Very interesting. I'm not sure if there's too much more that we need to go over in this video in particular. This is basically all that we really needed from it. Um. We don't need to be watching Doyle for the next 30 minutes, but I just wanted to go over that a little bit because, I mean, for one, it was fun. It was a nice little warm up. Two, we got some great memes out of it. Absolutely. And three, I just wanted to, you know, we have to uh, provide a counter narrative for some of these sorts of people, you know, um, left to their own devices. They're going to try to indoctrinate people as much as possible with their horrible talking points and their feels and, and their um, appeals to emotion. It gets a lot of people up like this. Um, a lot of people get caught up in believing these sorts of things. So we need to make sure that we're there. To stop them. Um, I believe in ex American exceptionalism like Obama. True.